The market economy revived after the First World War. Wartime damage was being repaired, the economy recovered, and trade developed a pace. Entrepreneurs were optimistic. Many eminent economists believed a longer period of prosperity was in sight. Yet in several key economies, real income of millions of ordinary citizens increasingly lagged behind growth in production and productivity. In that sense, there were clear signs of overproduction. Many people increasingly used borrowed money to buy consumer goods or to speculate on the stock exchange, while many countries still retained large foreign debts. Prices of shares of most traded companies collapsed. Owners sought to rid themselves of them as quickly as possible. Foreign loans began to be withdrawn, which further fueled chaos and turned the crisis into an international problem. The date of 24th of October 1929 went down in history as Black Thursday. It was the start of a great crash on the New York Stock Exchange. A wave of bankruptcies ensued. The world of business responded by limiting production and employment and by cutting costs. In the US, industrial production dropped by half by 1931. Consumer demand fell, investment projects halted, and unemployment was on the rise. The crisis became a vicious circle. Small manufacturers had to lower their prices, but could not compensate by selling more. Large firms could only respond by firing staff and cutting costs. That meant lower wages and even less demand. There was serious overproduction in agriculture and prices dropped dramatically, even more than in industry. This led to a massive pauperization of farmers. All countries took measures to limit their imports and increase exports by becoming cheaper. In the end, that meant that foreign demand decreased as well. The economic downturn exacerbated the crisis of democracy. Support for extreme political solutions grew. Initially, most governments responded to the crisis by hoping that the market mechanism would overcome it, namely that lower prices would attract more customers, while lower wages would lead to increased demand for labor. That did not occur. The global economy entered an era of state interventionism. The British economist John Maynard Keynes was the author of the first extensive theory of interventionism. State intervention in the economy can take several forms. Government can alter the currency exchange rate, increase or lower the tax level, or influence interest rates. However, it can also seek to combat the biggest curse of the crisis, unemployment, through unemployment benefits, public works, state loans, and government procurement. This often leads to budget deficits that in the 1930s remained unpopular with most politicians. The most extreme form of state intervention is the state becoming an entrepreneur itself or even managing the entire economy, as in some socialist or communist states. In the US, the state began to directly intervene in the economy and regulate it in an unprecedented manner. In March 1933, the government of President Franklin D. Roosevelt launched a program to combat the crisis that he announced in the previous year as the New Deal. Roosevelt was strongly influenced by a group of advisors known as the Brain Trust. The goal of his often improvised policies can be summarized as relief, recovery, and reform. Their effect continue to be discussed, but they certainly cleared the path for economic recovery. The New Deal boosted Roosevelt's popularity considerably, even though his policies also continued to encounter opposition and were not always consistent. Production recovered, but unemployment only truly decreased during the Second World War. The situation in Germany was different. The Great Crisis contributed to the increasing popularity of the Nazis. In 1933, Hitler came to power. The Nazis stimulated demand and employment through government expenditure, much of it for rearmament. 
private enterprise was not abolished, but the interests of individual sectors were often subordinated those of the state. Broad state intervention helped overcome the crisis. It began to recede from 1933, and in 1935 to 1937, production in most developed countries returned to pre-crisis levels. State intervention became a fundamental aspect of capitalist economies.